Good morning, everyone. It's Lee Bam Johnson just checking in. As I always start, I like to light my sage, get things going. Excuse me for one second. Always about cleansing. Just come from the prayer, the meditation, all that good stuff. So good morning. Want to make a prayer. God grant us the serenity to accept the things that cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I want to say that again. God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I have a topic that I do want to talk about. Um, and it is a topic that's... Uh, came to me yesterday after I finished teaching classes and then I got a chance to, um, you know, talk to Mr. Brendan Belicio. Just want to say thank you so much, sir, for checking in. A spiritual friendship, a brotherhood that's, you know, just remarkable. Just, I enjoy it. Enjoy every second, every level of communication that we sent you. You know, and came on board and been helping us as far as with the cancer drive for my wife and so forth. So I just want to say thank you to him. Um, this morning when I got up, once again, I've been up for a while, meditating my normal time. Um, and I've been doing a lot of reading. Um, these are a couple of the books that I was reading. I'm always reading, man. I just got a whole stack of books that I read a paragraph from every um, every day. That's just, <laughs> that's just what I do. So these are the paragraphs that impacted me and for me I've been doing that since I was able to turn my life around uh, just being able to take things that are I'm weak on within my own life and being able to use these as subject matters or discussions um, so what I want to do I want to I want to stay on point about what I want to talk about okay um, and it says everyone will not go to the next level Right now, it's real challenging times. I refuse to keep on mentioning what's going on amongst my students. I don't want to say the name. I know what's going on. I don't need to say the name. I don't need to say it over and over because um, you can see it everywhere. You can see it and hear it from everybody. What I need to do is focus on the solutions, the reality, follow good orderly directions, do what we need to do to protect ourselves and even certain things I might not understand it's important for me to seek to understand them just so everybody in the world could be safe, my family, my community, and so forth. Um, and one of the things that I realized, this new business model is just that. It's a new business model. I mean, it's, it's like everything right now is like starting all over. <coughs> it's a new beginning for everything from business to personal development all the things that we thought we knew, I mean, this is a whole new process. Who would ever think that we would be experiencing times like this and dealing with situations like this, you know, and who could give you the answers? Can nobody give you the answers? For me, who would ever think that I would end up going to jail? My dad did everything he'd do to prepare me from that situation. When I talk to my kids about it, I have to let them know, yeah, I mean, I got in trouble, but I got in trouble for something so small than what I should have really gotten in trouble for. So that was a blessing. You know, but nobody could have prepared me for how to get through that and how to deal with that. That was like a trial and error. I had to figure out that all on my own. Um, and one of the things that I really realized is that now is like starting a new business. It's starting a new life. It's like you got to relearn things that didn't work before or that you weren't sure of. I mean, of course, we build on the foundation that got us where we at. But you got to readjust that foundation. You got to readjust the, the things that you did. And I'm just really speaking for me. It's about flowing in harmony with the universe, making adjustments right now, just so you can continue to thrive and 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 right now really survive. Let's be real. 
we can keep talking about, about about thriving, but at some point in time, it's like it's like you could be the world championship basketball team. You know what I'm saying? We didn't see moments where Michael Jordan had to survive that moment or, or or that quarter just so he could win. You know, if he didn't make adjustments, if he kept still standing in the mindset of win, 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 he had never been able to um, you know, achieve success in the quarters that was defeating him. You understand what I'm saying? And it takes a team. Man. This ain't no. This ain't no I, I, I thing. This is a team. You know, I love my man, Michael Jordan. I mean, I love basketball, especially my man, Muggsy Bowes. I know I've been sharing his, his, his photos, everything for the last couple of days because we grew up together. Much love for you, Muggs, if you happen to see this man. Um, and would love to do some work. So I'm going to put that out. I would love for us to do some stuff together. But, I mean, just think about that. That's what a, a, a team do or that's what a player do. You got to know when it's time to go on defense, when it's time to be on offense. To me, Right now, it's about defense, okay? For five years, we have been, we didn't seen the ups and downs of our school. You know, we didn't seen the, the successful levels, the extraordinary levels. And we understood that even through the times that, you know, I, I, what we had the school, when I came home from jail, so that's like over 26 years or so, running a successful school. When I was on TV, everything. You know, every goal we wanted to achieve, we achieved. You know, we done been through the moments where it was like all about wealth and we forgot about our why. And then we've been able to figure out, man, you know, how do we change now? How do we make adjustments now? And I remember a long time ago when we were um, first coming up with the concept, just, you know, just expressing point in a minute, because I really want to correct that. I ain't, I didn't, as I say to everybody, I did, we did not create anything new. We just added structure to the madness. Nobody never really had a structured way to teach sparring. All we did was got out there, say fight. You survived, you stayed around, and if you was a, a artist, you found your own little techniques like Nasty Anderson's Blitz and Billy Blank's cartwheel kicks, um, Joe Lewis is grabbing with their, you know, the clothing with the reverse punch, you know what I'm saying, Laurie Kelly, you know, his kicks, you know, it, the list goes on and on, man, you know, so we, I mean, Arlene, I mean, Linda Dudley, her rich hand, you know, um, and what Arlene Lemus was able to do to go off to the Olympics and take sports karate and transition it to a whole new level. So I just wanted to add, you know, we just added, you know, structure to the madness. But one of the things that, that I realized, even in that process, it was so important for us to stay true to what we were trying to achieve. What was it that we were trying to accomplish throughout that process? In order to evolve our business, how do we, how do we thrive? How do we get through these challenging times? So we had to adapt to what was going on. What were the needs of the parents? What was the need of, um, you know, the people we were trying to cater to? Most importantly, our community. And for me as a martial artist, I like to really say, you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm true about this, I'm a martial artist first and foremost. I'm talking about the technique, the teaching, the development, the championship. I'm a martial artist first and foremost. Martial arts changed my life. I mean, the philosophy, the, the principles, I'm talking about good, authentic martial arts. I'm just that guy who refused to sell out and water it down so bad that you can't produce greatness. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? If that's going to hold me, I don't even want to, I mean, I'm not saying this in a funny way. I don't even want a school where I got over a thousand people in one location. I want to, you know, we've been through all that, had all these schools. I want one powerful school. And because of what I learned from Champ Nichols, what we're doing right now, we can cater to other people beyond what I could do if I had a whole bunch of locations. So I just want good, authentic martial arts. I want good kata. I want good sparring. I want good self-defense. I want good internal development. I want good basics. I want the ability to be able to transition to other things. So I'm, we are martial artists first and foremost. And to be able to make sure our business support that expression of the art. You know what I'm saying? When, when we talk about point MMA, I want to see kids really being able to hold their own. It ain't about winning because remember, I'm not trying. we're not trying to develop champions in the ring. We're trying to develop champions in life. So what we want to see is how can that kid become a champion in life? How can they deal with diversity, opportunity, I mean, op obstacles and everything that's come up in school and everywhere where they may go? That's first and foremost. And the business structure allows us to be able to comfortably la manifest our art and enjoy the expression of our art and don't water that down. You know, so when, when through, through that process of, of, of making that switch, Champ Nichols, Damon John, speaking manager, love you, Champ. Thanks for the message yesterday, my brother. Um, so much love, and I thank you for so much direction. So putting that shout out too as well. Um, 
He said, bam, how can people do martial arts with you on the beach, man? Ain't nobody can come to your dojo. Ain't nobody come to your dojo all the time. I mean, it's like five years ago. Bro, you got to make a way so that people can do martial arts with you on the beach. They got to do point MMA on the beach. They got to do point MMA while they on vacation. They got, and I mean, I heard them, but I didn't really get it. But I went in search to figure out what he was talking about. And guess what we did? We begin to structure what he said. It's what happened now. It's what's going on now. We've been trying to do this for the last five years. We've been trying to make adjustments so people can be able to learn martial arts wherever they are at. Not just in the dojo. Wherever they at online. You know what I'm saying? On their TV. You know all this. I've been working with so many people. But I think the one thing that I done learned through this whole process. You got people that are technical, you got people that are business savvy, and you got people that are just, you know, they just love their fans of the martial arts. They love the art. They love the principles and, 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 the, and, the, and the concepts, but they really don't want to practice the physical because they, they good. They, they they good, you know. I take one of my students, he's like, you know, great box. I mean, the man bad. He don't want to really learn all the kicks and the punches. He loved the principles. He loved the, the essence of what the martial arts represent. He aligned that with his skill set. He good. And as Champ said, most, you know, come on, you talking about major entrepreneurs that got all that money, man. They ain't trying to do no self-defense. They got too much money to be rolling on the ground. It's like, yo, show me how to, like, prevent that before it even get to that point. Because I got too much money to be, if it comes, yeah, but really, how can we prevent that? You know, so that, that, that whole evolution allowed us to, you know, try to communicate and talk to people and work with people. Just kept getting stuck, kept on running in brick walls because the one thing I realized too is that I have an instinct that on the street, and I tell, and I'm honest about this with my students on the street. When you hustle, you gotta learn. Cause I was a bashful kid. I was like a kid who wouldn't really talk that much. I used to get beat up, you know, cause I didn't want to fight back, and my dad would beat me cause I didn't want to fight back. So people would bully on me, and I mean bully me. I everyone even called bully man. You just had to grow up. Let me just I want to get away from that term. You just had to fight. That was what it is. It was a part of growing up. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to label it. We y'all can label it. It was just this was a part of growing up. You had to, you know, you had to find a way to communicate. And eventually I started fighting back, started getting respect. You know, and when I started making bad decisions and getting in the drug game and doing all that, you had to understand how to hustle. You had to be natural. You had to be able to think on your feet. You have to have instinct. You have to be able to say, yo, yo, got that smoke. What's going on, baby? You trying to get it from me. Don't get it from nobody else. What's going on? Cop it right here. I'm not saying that to promote that, but that's how you had to flow. What nobody teaching you that. You had to figure that out all on your own. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same thing in business. You know, when it's time to deal with your customers and deal with your clients, you know, or deal with anybody as a whole, you got to be able to creatively think on your feet. In the real world, if you are hesitant about thinking and flowing and adapting, you're going to lose the deal. In certain situations, you're going to lose your life. So that's what I tell the students. I'm always going to pressure them to see how they're going to respond and be able to flow and adapt and make adjustments. Ain't nobody out there on the street was taught how to hustle. You know what I'm saying? Most guys, let's, go, let's think about it. The average people that ain't coming to the dojos always say, and when we talk about street combat, the killers ain't coming to no dojos. The people that's trying to take a life, the people that's trying to commit a crime right now, the people that's trying to like, I mean, adopt kids, they ain't in your dojo. They out there doing what they got to do. They learning through trial and error. They too busy killing and hurting to be coming to a dojo to learn how to do that. Tony Blauer reminded me something one time. We were all people who lacked certain levels of self-esteem. We came to the dojo so we could learn how to build up our self-esteem and our confidence and our courage and all that stuff. We needed that structure to enhance that. Some people don't have to do that. So don't, I don't, I'm not trying to get that twisted. And I always, I was telling somebody the other day, I'm saying, and then the other thing, don't even claim that I'm the best martial artist that ever came from the city of Baltimore because I ain't even going to go amongst straight up killers and say I'm the baddest. Because guess what? You might not make it out of any environment that I come from, go in there and stake that claim. And we ain't even talking about no black belts. We ain't even talking about no masters. We ain't even talking about no Hollywood superstars. We talking about straight up people that represent. Because at the end of the day, the thing that's going to make you really be able to adapt to anything in life is your own inner spirit, your own inner instincts. Even during these times right now, it's time to tap into your God-given gifts. It's time to take all this time and creatively dig down the side and figure out what masterpiece you're going to come up with. What solution you're going to find? It's time to, 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 to go inside and develop self-love, self-appreciation. 
You know what I'm saying? And that's what jail taught me. I hate to keep saying that, but that's what Brother D, he told me, he said, man, now it's time to love yourself, homie. Now it's time to be real with yourself. Are you okay? Can you sit in that cell by yourself and not worry about anybody else? Can you take that time and figure out what you need to do? Well, guess what? Everything that I do was based upon everything that I didn't do before I went to jail. So every business plan, every curriculum, come on, man, when I'm sitting there teaching my students, I say, man, y'all can't figure this out. And I'm talking about online. Y'all can't figure this online. Well, when I was in the projects and I, and I couldn't afford a dojo, guess what? Or a teacher, I had to take what I seen in the movie theater, go back in the projects when everybody didn't know what I was going through and was against me and practice in the house. What's going on right now? That's what I had to do. I practice every day. When you went outside and you went on those pissy mattresses, you had to figure out how to flip all on your own. That's what you had to do. You had to figure it out. You had to fall down, get back up, fall down, get back up. I used the concept even with the students in, in the dojo. If you're on the basketball court and somebody throw the ball at you real hard and hit you in the gut and take your win from you, what do you do? Do you cry? Do you call your mommy? Do you say, don't do that to me no more? Do you do that? No, you don't. If you really want the respect and you want to really um, grow and get the people at the highest level to connect to you, at some level, you got to demonstrate the grit. Even if you got to fake it, well, you got to fake it till you make it. I use that concept because I remember it happened to me on a, on a basketball court before. I, I tell you a lot. I'm the martial arts is not against other sports. You know what I'm saying? I, I just want to hit that out. I love playing other sports. I love being entertained up by other sports because I understand that all those things are components to help you become a better martial artist. I'm trying to become a better person. Martial arts is not the end and all of so whatever we do. You learn something from baseball and football that can enhance your martial arts skill. You learn something from soccer that can enhance your, uh, your martial arts skill. Look at MMA. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to become that complete person. So I use different elements. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty nice with basketball right now. You know what I'm saying? I can shoot some jumpers. I can shoot some half courts and all that. But that took trial and error. That took some embarrassments. That took some drip, some will, some, 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 some thrive, some survival. But all those things, even what I represent right now, even what I'm saying to you right now, that took so much self-seeking and so much self-development and studying, even business when nobody was around. I had to figure out what was right for me. What could I constantly be able to say that was right for me? And when you're in dire situations and circumstances, you know, like I'm saying, you got to figure out what's going to work for you. What is, what is the formula? What is the business model for you? What is the personal development model for you? For me, and it's, and it's crazy, you know, in the jail cell, man, when I decided not to commit suicide and choose life, I got up and I started kicking every day. And when we were doing our Zoom class yesterday, we had to do a technique called the hook kick into a sweep. I said, don't even tell me that you can't sweep wherever you at. Because guess what? If I did it in a jail cell, what's your excuse? I'm being real with you. I did it in a jail cell. Okay, um, don't tell me. And I'm saying this to everybody. This is the process of how do we make what's going on right now effective and we make it work. And this is real talk. So how can you not comprehend what you're learning right now in a short period of time under such stressful, dire circumstances when I was able to do it in a jail cell and I had nobody to help me? Everybody around me was against what I was doing. Every Most of the people that was around me was all about, you know, trying to figure out how to get another package or how to like you know, save their, their, their behinds or commit a crime or get over whatever it may be. I had to make a decision that particular time because of all the preparation that happened beforehand that now is not that what I have don't work. What I got to do is work it. You cannot keep on learning new stuff over and over and over. You got to perfect what you do. The beautiful thing about online training and, and training at home and training by yourself, you get good when your teacher's not around. You get better. So when you come back, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can connect even more. This situation right now, is, and I mean, I'm just telling you, man, it's an opportunity to create so, to come up with so much creativity, so much creative momentum, figure out things that you never got a chance to figure out. I said that to my students yesterday. I said, what's the difference between you right now and the guy locked up? Time. The most valuable thing in the world that you got is time. Once it's gone, you never get it back. Time is more valuable than money because if you don't use the time right, you ain't going to get no money. What you do right now on your own when nobody else is watching, when nobody else is motivating you to get up, when nobody else is telling you what to do. Guys, when I went to jail, wasn't nobody there telling me, yo, get up, work out. Yo, get up, practice your forms. Yo, get up, take the curriculum that you like probably forgot. 
because you was homeless and you were out there putting drugs and alcohol in your system. Ain't nobody going to be again. Ain't nobody going to be helping you when you come home. So you got to help yourself. So you probably need to pull out a piece of paper or get a newsletter or some toilet paper, whatever you can get in this jail cell and write out your business plan and write out the curriculum that you choose to teach. I tell all my students, and sometimes I joke, I say, no, nah, this come from Master Poe. They be laughing like, and then someone be thinking like, this does this really come from an ancient master? No, this come from ancient discovery within myself. I figured out that I needed to take all my experiences, all the things I did to people, all the things I overcame, and I needed to align it with our traditional system of Tian Shin Pai. So when I come home, I could represent an expression that truly represented me. I had to not prove to the world that I was I was I was a person that had now truly transformed and changed my life. I had to prove to myself. I had to forgive myself. But if I'd have never had that time on my hand, would I have even went to that point? No. So that's what we all got. What are we going to do with it? What are we, you know what I'm saying? Even when I said to the students yesterday, before I went to jail, I was already a world champion. I already went to China before I went to jail. I was already in magazines before I went to jail. I was already on TV before I went to jail. <clears throat> I had already ran a business before I went to jail. I did a lot of great things before I went to jail. I had already made a major amount of money, you know, doing the illegal activity before I went to jail. But guess what? When I came home, I achieved way more than what I had achieved before. And the beautiful thing about that is that I realized that I needed to be grateful. I needed to spend more time and learn how to appreciate things that I'm doing. I needed to understand the words that I just subliminally was saying, the subliminal things that I was doing. And then I realized that the reason why before I got locked up, I was winning tournaments. I was traveling all over the place. I was, hey, I was in China, everywhere. But there was something that I could never get. See, I'm, I'm that type of martial arts. I got to win. That's just, hey, man, come on. I'm sorry. I had to win some tournaments. I had to win. I had to achieve goals. I wanted those things. Those things behind you right now, I wanted those. Yes, I wanted those for me. I remember um, being around George Chung when we used to be at, at, at tournaments. He used to always say this thing. You know, uh, and I was, that's when I called myself the water boy. I was a little kid around all all that greatness. And he would say, don't be a shoulda, coulda, woulda guy. Don't be a shoulda, coulda, woulda guy. See, I can't be a shoulda, coulda, woulda guy. I got to be a guy that did. I got to be the person that's going to do it. And that's what this thing is about. That's what I want each and every one of my students or anybody I'm coming in contact with. Be the one that do it. Be the one that do it. Be the one that gives your best. See, because what made me be able to come back from such devastating de despair I realized that when I would run at three o'clock in the morning to win on a national circuit or reach the movies or reach any of the stuff that behind you, I realized that in order for do in order for me to do that, I had to beat my competition while they were asleep in the bed. So when I would get up in the morning and run the run the field in in, in, in DC and in the Washington Monument, I knew nobody doing that. I learned that from reading something about Chuck Norris. He said he had already beat his competition before he even went into the tournament. So guess what? That's what I did. I knew what nobody like, I knew was nobody like up, up in the morning training like I was. I knew when it was raining and snowing, wasn't nobody running in the rain, sweating in the rain. Wasn't nobody running in the snow when the snow was so high. Wasn't nobody doing that. <clears throat> I realized during that time through competition, let's think about it, let's be real. When you understand muscle memory in your body, you don't even have to practice your cardio to win. Half of us during that time, come, keep, keep, let's, let me just be real. Half of us during that time of competing, once you remembered your Carter, you just showed up or your fighting technique, you just showed up and <clears throat> you participated and you won. That, let's just be real. I didn't want that. I wanted more. I wanted what Billy Blank said even before he did Tybo. Train like a maniac. And then when it's time to perform, you ain't got to worry about nothing. So when I was in jail, I trained like a maniac. I promised myself I would never be out of shape again. I promised myself I would work harder than anybody else, most importantly myself. I promised myself anybody that remember <clears throat> when I would compete, I was the first person at the tournament. If the, if the, if the door didn't open at 6 a.m., I was at the door at 6 a.m. When most people came in the arena of any tournament I was at, I probably was there before most people, me and the cleaner people, because I needed to get my aura and my spirit in it. When I would line up, if the first place person was going to be lined up on the left and go e er son sir then guess what I would do? And I tell my students that I would go ahead and line up right there. And if somebody were lined up there, I would just step in front of them. Why? 
because I'm already winning. When people was clapping, when people was clapping for someone else, much love for Richie Brandon, one of my, him and Kevin, the greatest competitors I have ever went up against, you know, so, so much love for them and we would cheer each other on. But I remember I would turn my back while they was competing. Because in my mind, and I still believe the same thing, they clapping, but they clapping for me. They just ain't see me yet, so thanks for clapping for me. And then when I turn around, I walk up there, I don't need to see what my competition is doing because you might be doing something that might throw more. Whatever you might be good at, I might be weak at. So if I'm watching you while you perform and I come up, one of the things I always have a hard time with were butterfly twists. You know what I'm saying? And Carmichael Simon, you remember that if Carmichael see this, that time when I came home from China, I did that butterfly twist, and I think it was you <laughs> or somebody was right there, and I like, boom, hit the floor. That just stayed in my head for a long time. I had to break that thing. So why am I going to watch somebody like Richie Brandon, my, you know, once again, God bless his soul, throwing a butterfly twist, and I see him throw that twist, it's going to throw off my own mind. That's why right now I got to be careful when I'm, look, when I'm paying attention to you on the internet. I, I got to be conscious of what people are saying. I got to be conscious of what people are trying to tell me to do with business. I got to be conscious of what people are trying to tell me to do with my own curriculum. See, in order to be great, can't nobody make you great. See, if the person that's there is not trying to bring out the greatness that's already inside of you, then how are you going to be able to adapt and flow to whatever environment that you run your business in? Or you as a student, you as a, ch a kid right now, it's about self-expression. That's why we created a home training kit. Come on, Michael Jordan had to have a will to practice the basketball. I mean, to dribble the ball. Kobe Bryant had to have a will to do that. Come on, Tom Brady had to had the will to do that. You know, John Elway, these people started finding a love for what they became great at without anybody telling them what to do. Most importantly, half of the people probably told him, don't do it. You crazy. That ain't going to ever happen. I take my man Muggsy Bowes. I sat there in the projects when people said, no, nah, man, man, ain't no Muggsy going to make it. Muggsy Bowes is too little, man. Ain't no Muggsy going to make it. I'm growing up on a basketball court with Muggsy. I'm seeing Muggsy. We're in the same neighborhood. We, you know, come on, Maisie, Muggsy Bowes, Skip Wise. You know what I'm saying? So many great basketball players. And guess what? Muggsy did it. Muggsy, Muggsy ain't listening to what everybody else said. Muggsy had to find a way to listen to what was inside his gut and his heart and his soul. And what I try, what I strive to do in anything that I do, and Bruce Lee said, the truth lies outside of all system patterns and structures. We come to teach people. We come to write a book to help a person. We come to share notes to help a person. But these times right now, if those books, those tools, those techniques are not trying to allow you to find your own way, they're not going to help you when a moment in time comes for you to be able to do what you got to do. Can't nobody make you great. They only enslave you and trap you. The great tournament people. Come on, let's think about it. In martial arts, let's just think about it because I'm being real about it. I'm, I'm so happy to see my students tuning in and have first and foremost... We now can see that we are, we're amongst a generation of students that's far beyond what we could ever imagine. So stop, criticize, and stop for a minute. Them kids now getting up, watching TV, and working out. I don't care if, even if it's for 30 minutes. Think about it. I don't care what they're doing. They got the self-discipline to sit there and go through the motions of what you're doing right now. All over the world right now. Never in history. When I was coming up, it was one or two that was doing it, and me... Brother Byron and certain people was doing it that was self-taught, teaching them, teaching themselves. Now these kids are right there at the TV. The parents are letting them go right there at the TV. The flip side to this is that they gotta be is what they do when you're not watching that makes them great. I always tell people, I don't teach my kids. I'm gonna say it right here. I don't teach my kids. I let them go ahead and 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 emulate and adapt to the environment, and they'll tell you. When I get something, I, they know when they got something good. Because then I'll come over and say, hey, let's put this there, let's put that there. Then I walk away. Now, if I come back or if you come to me and you say, Dad, what was that? <laughs> Forget it. It's over. I ain't going to tell you that. I dropped it. I, I, come on, man. I dropped the seed. It's up to you to figure out what to do with that seed. See, that's, that, that's a level. That's a level that I tell my students you want to get to. Man, you can't be on no basketball court saying, yo, how can I play? Well, guess what? When it's time to get in the game, they're going to crush you. 
In sports karate, you can't walk in there or in a fighting match and say, yo, so how do you do that round kick? That's a time and a place, but guess what? If you want to work amongst the greatness, the great ones that can take you beyond anything that you, the ordinary can take you, then y'all got to come in, y'all got to give a little and take a little. That's what it's all about. That's the same thing in business. At some point in time, I mean, certain industries, it's like every industry, is the big, it ain't always like this. Everybody ain't paying everybody for coaching. Everybody ain't paying everybody for some knowledge. At some point in time, if you got something to offer, it's the meeting of the minds and y'all exchange information. And then if, if you have something that is uniquely different and it can ha add value to enhance this person thing, then guess what? Then you're like, yo, yo, all right, yeah, I'm going to pay for that, man. You're going to pay for it because that's what you want to do. You ain't going to pay for it, which I believe the martial arts had became some years, where it now became the new, like, go-to person to take and abuse the guy that's running a small school and all he wants. And you're trying to convince him that he needs to have a big school. He okay with a small school. His students are, like, great. He gets a joy for seeing great students that are great athletes and great martial artists and great people. Remember back in the day when I came up, my instructor didn't accept that many students. The only way you could even get in the club is that somebody had to refer you. That's the old school. So you was among like-minded people. But guess what? Isn't that what you really want in your door? Especially during these times right now. You got a group of students, a group of parents that are committed to following you, to following and believing that we can make it through. Even in our immediate communities. That's what we got. It's about everybody working together. Nobody's in charge. We're all in charge. Somebody got the courage to step out and lead, step up and lead, then that's what it that shall be it. But we all in charge. Nobody's better than nobody. Nobody's not trying to take advantage. We are all equal right now. Nobody had the answers for what's going on. Nobody. Can't nobody. If you're a real martial if you just a, come on, man, a human being, can't nobody tell you how to be you? We give you things that will enhance you. We give you things that will discover you. We give you things that will bring forth the ability for you to stand up with confidence like I'm doing right now. It wasn't until I learned how to love me and stop pleasing, stop pleasing other people. Man, when I came home to open up my school from jail, I didn't worry about nobody else's school. I wasn't worrying about nobody else's school. I had to worry about me. For all of my life, I've been avoiding time with me. For all my life, I was trying to learn all these things. When do you stop for a minute and perfect what you have? If you keep on putting a whole bunch of stuff on something, come on. What are you going to become? You're going to become nothing. You're not going to be strong enough. At the end of the day, I don't care if you're in business. If you see it as being something different, then that's on you. I see it all being the same. Business, martial arts is all the same. The same principles apply to business. You know what I'm saying? The same, you need discipline to be a great successful person. You need time and to be a good business person. You need all those things to be a good parent, to be as a complete martial artist. So you got to be able to take the time in and really spend a little bit more time in becoming a better person and, and expressing your own truth. Because once you understand your own truth, and this is just for me now over years, if you can't enhance the person I am right now, then we really can't work together. If you try to take me away from all the things that I have accomplished and tell me that they don't work and tell me why your way is better, no, that ain't about that. It can't be that way. Because even some other business person, whatever you were using, if you can't adapt it to the culture of your people, you're going to be messed up. Come on, let's understand. You you know, I'll bet, I'll bet everything on this. Do the research. Martial arts at the end of the day is about the expression of self. It's about the mastery of self. Isn't that what we're trying to teach our students? The greatness. Why do kids, when they become teenagers, leave the dojo? Why? Because now the lightning came on and all the things that we were doing that made them believe it was true, they now get a chance to think for themselves. They're like, hold up, man. Why did, I ain't feeling this. This is like corny. This is like whatever. How do we continue to evolve like every other sport, basketball, baseball, and let the cool way? Because the principles of martial arts is cool. MMA is cool to people. But it's something that we lost. And it's important for, that's what Point of MMA and what we do is about how do we make them be able to tap into that right now. At home, they got the ability, they showing up, they being motivated, they doing what they need to do. But the beautiful thing that I got to do, and I say it to everyone, when I'm teaching, forget the kicks and the punches. I'm trying to teach your character. 
on TV? Are your eyes still making contact with me? With that punch, are you really giving me umph? Because I, without using the term of what's going on, if you, I told him just yesterday, if you're not giving me everything you got right now during these times, what's going to happen to you? There is no time, no time, good morning, sir, for you to sit back and say, wait, I had to have a, we had to have a talk with a couple of kids yesterday. They, they don't want to get on, they don't want to sit, they don't want their face to be seen on the camera. I'm like, yo, hold up. Mom, like, can you talk to them? I'm like, hold up, for real? I was pissed, man. Because what, you can't be playing? And, I, and if I love these kids that much, I got to be real. Ain't no, come on, Mikey, throw a kick. Come on, man, it's okay. Show up, please take the class. I'm going to give you love. I'm going to give you focus. I'm going to over-deliver more than what you could ever possibly imagine because it comes from my heart. I just wish people would have did it for me. So when I'm sitting there talking to these young men, I'm saying, look, yo, for real, your mom, me and my wife, look, y'all got to be men now. Your mom needs you to step up and be a man. What's going to happen if something happened to your mom right now? Forget the kicks or the punches, homie. What you going to do to be a, uh, to be a man? How you going? You got to grow up right now. I ain't trying to rob you. We talking my students. Forget all that other stuff that everybody tell me. That's what we teach. Now get on here. He kept, you know, hiding his face. No, get on here. Let me see your eyes. I want to see you. If you a man, look at me in my eyes. So guess they do. They got on the camera. And I said, guess what? If you ain't going to stand up and do what you need to do, if I can't come to you, one of the black buses right there going to come to you and they're going to correct you. You ain't going to be doing that to your mom. Your parents dealing with too much stress right now to make sure you got a roof over your head. It's time for you to step your game up. Ain't no sleeping. Ain't no being afraid. Being afraid of what? Right now, you in this time right now, man. Did you, you, never in the history, this is work. This is like me being in jail or me being, uh, uh, you know, in, in war. If you ain't being that direct with them kids, what the hell are you doing with them? What you going, when are you going to say being direct and real with them in a loving and caring way? When? You ain't got no other time but right now. So I need, we need to engage with them. We got to let them know, look, you got a red belt on. Like my wife said, you got a red belt on. If you don't step your game up, we going to take that belt and we going to mail you a white belt in the mail. You will get it at your doorstep. Now, guess what? The thing that I realized that I know, I would rather for that kid to quit. Because one day, when life hits him up beside, upside his butt, he going to remember the words that I said. I know for a fact. Right now, man, we've been playing around, watering down, smiling, joking, playing. Ain't no more of that right now. We in a loving and caring and positive way. Got to be real. We got to be direct. We got to catch them. We got to tap them like Osa Cassell did for me. He said, look, bro, give me the keys to the school. You don't deserve the school. Read your resume. I used to think he hated me, but I'm going to tell you for real. When I was in jail, that's why nobody had to teach me what to do. Because I already knew what to do because the seeds was planted in me. Problem was, I never worked the seeds. From what my parents taught me, from what the people taught me, the only thing that I wish they would have did, I wish they'd have been more direct with me so I wouldn't have had to go through it. So would I tell those, would me and my wife tell those students? No. We're what we wish we would have had when we came up. So whatever martial arts didn't do for us, we was a positive thing, a lot of positive things that it did. But what I need you to understand that I'm a martial artist that's going to share with you where I'm at. It ain't easy for me to get up. It ain't easy for me to do what I'm doing. It ain't easy for me to, like, you know, tolerate people giving me a lackadaisical attitude. It ain't easy for me to be dealing with people that think that they can try to take advantage of me or try to, like, you know, flip. Come on, man. I've been in a hustling game. Ain't no way you can even flip that over top of me. If you've ever been in a hustling game, come on, man. Don't even go there. You got stick up, man. You got police. You got everybody trying to take you. So when you got somebody in corporate America trying to play you, you're like, man, I'm going to go ahead and give him a pass. Because for real, I can't even afford to go to that level. And I tell them that. Yeah, so I got, I had to learn how to like be humble, yet not weak, proud, yet not boastful. And I got to give him a pass. That's what I'm trying to teach you. Because if I'm wrong one day, I need you to be, I need you to correct me. And like I told him, I need y'all getting up, getting on schedule, man. What you do right now. What they do with anybody, business person, family, oh, that's why I mean everybody ain't going to go to the next level. When Brother D said, look, only one of y'all going to make it, that's what the man told all of us, 20 of us. 
Only one of y'all going to make it. Look, I'm a competitor. I don't care. Everybody might hate competition. Yeah, I don't like the politics. I call it politics because everybody got a trick going on. But what I do, I enjoy competitiveness. You know why? Because I got to compete. I got to get out there. I got I to achieve success. I got to achieve. And ain't no, I don't care what you're doing. What I need to know is know that I made it from the hood to a level where I'm at right now. So that's a success for me. I can't even begin to compare what everybody else got going on. I got to remember me. <clears throat> and I got to remember, too, that my wealth is incredible. Because why? I get a chance to touch people's lives. So I was a cat that left the dojo because I was out there to the hustling game. I was a cat that disappointed my students because I was irresponsible. I was a guy that got locked up and got locked up and seen half of my, seen a student that was the CEO. How embarrassing was that? You understand what I'm saying? I was the guy that the whole, watch, the whole martial arts world knew that he achieved all this and now he in jail. So I had to take all my weaknesses and all my setbacks and do it not for you, but for me. I'm the guy that can sit there and speak to his kids and tell them what the lesson he learned from that, from that choice and tell them why don't you make no bad choice. Like I told my little son, that's right, my little six-year-old son yesterday, he, you know, we talked, he said, Daddy, so why did you get in trouble? We didn't talk about it before. You, went to, you got in trouble. Why, Daddy? I said, I got in trouble because I made bad choices. And when I finally stopped, decided to stop making them bad choices, they're like, do you make good choices? That's something called karma. So because of the karma that I had planted way before then, when I started doing good, the way the world works is that now all the consequences for all the bad choices you made, now they start coming back to you. So guess what, son? Talking to both of them. This is what I need you to do. Make the best good choices that you can make right now. Even doing your homework. Because guess what? When bad things out of your control come, you can humbly with confidence and pride and joy say, hey, I'm good with this, man. Let's get it in, baby. Because you don't own it. You can't control it. But you can control what you got going on inside. And that's what I'm saying with my students. That's what I feel for them. That's how much I love them. That's why when I see them right there, and then when that thing is over, they say, thank you, Professor. Oh, man, you don't know. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. God took all this from me one time. He took every last thing from me one time. Do you think I'm going to play with it and sell some garbage and get some garbage to people when they need, they need realness so bad right now. They need, they read real connection, real martial arts. It's, before, it's beyond the kick or the punches. I said, man, guess what? Stop watching my big movements. Stop watching the big things I do. Pay attention to the small, subtle things. Because if you know anything about martial arts, anything, is the most boring Time wasted things that everybody think that are so small, intricate, and detailed that you miss it. Without those, you can't have a strong foundation. I don't care what nobody teach you. Yeah, let's be real. I'm saying it from a business standpoint. We got to move. We got to keep going. We got to keep everybody moving. We got to have a fast-paced class. But guess what? Is that really in tune? Yeah, that's a good flow and keep everybody going, keep everybody moving. But if you really want to help them, got to be a lot more detail in that. I'm about teaching the real person. The real development of the martial arts. The money is a byproduct of just giving my heart. Because when it's time for me, when it's time for me to go home, even I said to them, if something happened to me today, I can lay my head down knowing that every encounter that I had with every student and every parent was genuine. You might not understand it. You might think I'm being too tough. But one day, guess what? When that student is in a level of darkness, it ain't got to be jail, but it'll be something where at that point in time, they got to make a decision. And when they got to make that decision, they're going to pull off for something that was planted inside of them. That's just basic. That's just that's what we learned since the beginning of time. That's what the elders do. Come on, man. No, I'm about teaching real martial arts. I'm about developing a real brand. I'm about the art. And if we understand anything about art, if you can make a living off your art, like Steve LaValle and anybody say, then you want, you're one of the wealthiest people in the world. And that's what we've been able to do. Ain't got nothing to do with dollar bills or whatever. It's what's in my side, my heart, my spirit, man. Even though my, know my kids, like, you know, come on. I don't need you to be sitting back playing video games all the time. All the time. This is idle time. What is idle time? Idle time is a devil's workshop. So get up, get your mind, get your body, get your spirit right. Don't be sleeping over time because everybody else sleeping and, 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 and nature done put nothing but time on your, hand, on your hand and all you can do is just get stuck and not do nothing. What you going to do? What you going to do? Now tell me for anybody that's watching this, when you going to get it in? 
if right now you're not going to give it beyond 110%, when are you going to get it in? See, some people ain't going to move to the next level. Because if right now ain't making you change your whole habit, your work ethics, and, and things that you know produce bad results, then come on, what could be worse than this? <laughs> no, man. See, that's what's different. That's why I don't, need, I, I don't need to go to jail again. That was it for me. That was it for me. That's why I say it was the greatest thing. It kicked my behind. I ain't, I ain't going to, I told my kids, I ain't even going to, I might use it as a reference, but I ain't going to fake. I ain't going to fake and say, I'm hard. I'm near some that Yeah, jail. Nah, anybody to tell you, yo, I got this. Yeah, all right, go ahead. Jail is the closest thing to death. You want fake? Go there. See what it do to break most people. Imagine you being sick. Imagine you being lost. Imagine you feeling, you feeling so claustrophobic and or you feeling so overwhelmed and you hollering, hey, CEO, can somebody come and talk to me? And you need somebody to come and talk to you. And three hours pass by, nobody come. And all they say, shut up, lay down and shut up. You dying in yourself. Well, guess what? We in times like that, man. Never in history would I ever thought that I would be in a time like this and seeing my kids or seeing students experience this. I ain't going to say the name because I ain't going to get a name power. When I'm going to give power is my ability to find positive energy, positive solutions, wake up every day. Sometimes I got to ask myself, am I crazy? Why are you so pumped up? Because I, what else am I going to do? I'm used to this. This is what I had to do. Ain't nothing promised to us other than us getting up, like I'm telling each and every one of them students and anybody that see this, for every kid to get on that, get on these things, man. Give it 110%. <clears throat> show up one time. Don't show up with your shoes off because you're at home. Show up with everything on. Show up like you prepared to win each and every day. See, don't develop bad habits. When I came home from jail, check this out. I knew that I, I, I could show you a little less. I knew I needed a suit. You know what I'm saying? I knew I needed a suit. I knew that I needed a pad. I knew that I needed a pen. I knew I needed a watch. So some some basic necessities I had. Because in order to get a job, I need to go to a job interview with a suit on. So I can't go dress half. But even in competition, man, why am I going to show up? With, how are you going to show up to win without the right shoes and the right weapon and the right, the right uniform, the right music? Anybody that know me when I used to compete doing cassette days, I had a big little packet of nothing but probably like 50 different cassettes. I had rap music to pump me up. I had Beethoven music to calm me down. I had all types of music in my little pouch. pouch. Man, if I felt empty with something like that, I was lost. Even when I tied my shoes, there was a certain method of how I had to tie my shoes. I had to make sure I had a set of shoes that I trained in, a set of shoes that I performed in. So guess what? I'm trying to teach them that. Come on, this ain't, come on, we talk about little, man, come on, it's a whole little method to the madness. There's a workout that you do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then guess, I mean, I mean, there's a workout that you do all those days, but then there's a workout that you do the, the week before the tournament, so you won't mess your body up. Business, every day I wake up, I got a whole schedule I'm following. And what I'm saying to anybody right now, man, what you doing right now will determine what you'll be doing when all this pass. When all this pass. Give it, get it. Follow it, do it. Everybody that's watching, get the small little detail. Forget the big picture. Did anybody get the big picture? I don't care how much. Come on, fast food ain't even fast food no more. Sometimes you can go get fast food and they take longer than you. You, you be like, man, I should just stay home and cooked it. And guess what? The thing that's so important is it ain't nothing like the basics. Ain't nothing like the small little detail. I want the foundation to be on solid grounds. So when I'm teaching a student, I'm teaching a parent, I'm connecting. Look at me in my eyes when I'm talking. Give me your undivided attention. Whatever we doing, guess what? As I say, if a system, a structure, a plan, business plan, whatever it may be, as Bruce Lee would say, don't free that person into finding a way that's right for them. Because I don't care what you say. Come on, man. Let's remember. Anybody that did contest, did competition, most of the time when you won on any level, even in business, you succeeded. Even, <clears throat> and let me say this point before I go to the next one. The reason why... You succeeded at those, some of those times. It was on the mistakes that you made. Your mistakes were better than your what you practiced on. And because you were able to cover it up and, and get even stronger doing the mistake because you know you made the mistake, it was so incredible that the people were going crazy. Like, yo, oh my God, you were the man. What was happening? And if you honest, like I, I, I have always been about my own development. 
They were like, yo, yeah, they just don't even know for real. I made a mistake, man. How did I win that? <laughs> but I ain't, if you say that was my best, I ain't going to die here. I ain't going to deny it. I ain't going to deny it, but hey, okay. But still, if I wouldn't have practiced, I wouldn't have been able to adapt in the flow and make adjustments under pressure. That's called planning your work, working your plan. And the other thing is so important, what's your goal? You know, what's your goal? While we all going through, don't, don't lose your goal, man. Readjust your goals. Readjust your goals on where you want to go. Readjust your goals on what you want to achieve. Do what you need to do. But this is the greatest time in history that we all got, man. Now you get a chance to take care of yourself. Now you get a chance to express yourself. And anybody ain't there to try to enhance you and help you and guide you. And anybody is there not to try to help you be able to function within your own dynamics. By hearing what you got going on and, and, and what you got to do and how we can do it. Then how is that going to help you? See, because I don't care where you at. And I'm just saying this for me. I don't care what somebody teach you. I don't care what somebody say going to work. Ain't no guarantees from it for no level. Business, nothing. Because there's going to come a point in time when you're going to be put in a situation where it's going to just be you and God. And the only thing you can pull on is what's inside your heart and your spirit. I'm trying to build up your heart and spirit and give you confidence in yourself. That's what Bruce Lee said. And, I, and this might not be an in, incorrect quote here. That tombstone that, stayed out, that was outside of his dojo. It says something like, there lies a man, <clears throat> once fluid and adaptable, but now climb, crammed with classical mess. The man was once fluid. Before he came, he was fluid. He was adaptable. He was, he was everything. That's why it's so hard to work out with a beginner. Always have the beginner mind. Always have the childlike mind. Because when you got that, man, you create remarkable things. And during times like during times of uncertainty, you got to come up with creative elements, man. The crossover with Allen Iverson wasn't something he made up like from a, a strategic plan. It was made up under pressure, just like you can't teach people rhythm. I tell people, I show you a pattern of footwork. But as Danny Asanto taught me about knife fighting, he said, I show you the drill, and I'll throw the pattern away when it comes down time for you to do what you got to do. So all what we're doing right now to use these patterns and these blueprints for our kids, everything, what I want to see, and we already see it. So once again, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to see a bunch of kids going up in front of a TV doing what we all know that came up old school when you didn't have all these things available to you. You had one thing. You had the ability, the desire, the passion to get up and commit to just doing something, even if it was like, wasn't done wrong. It don't matter, man. Because really, who can say what you're doing is right or wrong? Because what you're developing is muscle memory. The key right now, and to me, that's what martial arts has always been about. Even combat. Develop muscle memory. How you train is how you're going to respond. Right now, developing this muscle memory of scheduling and goal setting and, you know, getting there, doing what you got to do, being self-motivated, you know, working with your parents Creatively trying to find a way to, to function and adapt and, and coming together as a family, not stressing your mommy or your daddy out, your parents not stressing you out, and some businessmen not stressing out to your clients. You know what I'm saying? Or not stressing out anybody. We all working together. We all equal right now. What we do together and what we do to help one another, when we get to the other side, we'll be back to the basic cores of what the world used to be. Remember, the community worked together. Why no one person? Why would no one business come in that community trying to take from that one, that one each and every individual a loaf of bread like ten dollars, you know what I'm saying? Or something like so, Scott. The price is so crazy. Like yo, for real. And then you got to sign up to saying no refund. You telling that person that after they make this purchase with a product that you know and I know ain't even going to last, or or the or the the bread the bread is stale or whatever it may be. You telling them that once they go home and discover the 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 um the bad qualities of this product, they can't bring it back and get their money back. That's what you're saying. No, 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 man. It's time for a change in business. No, 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 no. How would you even sit there? That's like a, a hustler. See, and, and, and I ain't promoting this, but even a drug dealer knows that, look, don't get nobody no bad product. Don't sell that bad product to somebody because guess what? One day, somebody going to put it out amongst this person and then before you know it, either somebody going to come and they're going to do... Well, let me, I'm going to give you a real life story, Okay. I remember this time, this is in my book. I was doing my little bad stuff. And, you know, the night before, we out there doing my da and, you know, and we was rolling. Everybody on the step, we just rolling. Then all of a sudden, somebody said, police, yo, police. So you would break off. We run it. But when I broke off and I ran, I still had some people's money. So I broke off. I ran. We went on, did our own little thing. And, um, you know, I'm thinking like, man, you know, I, I ain't worrying about them. Loss of disrespect. So I take the money, spend it, do something else. Next day we come to work. I'm there dealing with some people. 
some people who shouldn't be distracting me while I'm on, on, you know, doing what I got to do, talking about some drama. And the guy that I held his money, once again, that shows that the game, that's another story in itself. But the guy comes up and he like, yo, um, uh, can I get my product from the money I gave you yesterday when the police came? I'm like, yo, get off my face, man. I ain't trying to, da, da, da. I'm just like, da, 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 just going whatever. So the guy's supposed to have my back. My supposed to have been my boy who let him up. I'm thinking, because when I came up at one time, I ain't had to worry about that because you wouldn't even got past nowhere if, if the people that was with me had represented having my back. But this guy, you know, the game had changed. Wasn't nobody really, it was like, oh, you know, selfish desires. Wasn't nobody even trying to work together no more. So I'm sitting there going through this argument. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, somebody come and say, yo, I said, give me my money. So I turned around. The guy hit me so hard, like, bow. I went up like almost like three or four feet in the air and just dropped. I was like out. So I get up bleeding and just walk. And I'm like just trying to get myself together and walk. And I guess my money came out my pocket or whatever. So the guy took my money. Now I'm I'm in the game. We making money. So the cast that's with me just sitting there watching. So I go up and I go look in the, and I make it to the, the, the stash house. And I look in the bathroom and I look in the window and I mean, look in the mirror and all I see is blood coming down my face. I ain't even think about nothing else, but how did that even happen? How did somebody that's supposed to have my back let somebody come by like that and broke all the rules of the game? It was at that time I realized, thank God, I ain't, I ain't doing this no more. And I stopped. doing. I stopped at that level. Didn't stop completely, but doing stuff at that level. So that's, I guess that's what I'm saying, man. You know what I'm saying? You... <clears throat> You you, 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 you got to take care of people. It ain't about taking advantage and saying something or treating somebody because it's going to come back to you. I'm a person to tell you, I got in trouble. I paid the penalties for the karma that I set. So will I even set, set out any karma like I told those students yesterday? Them young men, I don't care what comes my way today. I'm going to do whatever it takes to take care to serve God, take care of family, serve community, and take care of everybody in that school. I'm going to do whatever it takes. You understand what I'm saying? Because God gave me another chance. Only difference is, I ain't going to do nothing illegal. It's going to all be legal. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it 110% commitment to make sure I put nothing out but God's intentions, my why, my purpose, and make sure everybody is good. I will not increase the pressure or drama or stress on anybody else's life while I'm here there on this earth. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Even if I got to go in a corner and cry it out by myself, I will not put that pressure on anyone else. And that's what it's about, man. That's why I'm saying if you ain't willing to do none of that, everybody ain't gonna make everybody ain't gonna trans everybody ain't gonna go to the next level. To me, the next level is just being that peace inside yourself, man. But we all can. It's gonna take a lot more work now than any other time in history. So now what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? How are we gonna step up? How are we gonna train our students? How are we gonna get everybody? And I think everybody that's helped me, Brandon Melicio, Jeremy, Llewellyn, I mean Richard Bailey, Shane, Mr. Wilkes, Isaac Florentine from WMAC Masters. Champ Nichols, Commander Muffley, thank you for the call this week. You was a man with EFC out of everybody else. When I was on that TV, WMAC Masters, you were the one that gave me so many chances. I know I never publicly said it. You was the one that helped me buy my building. You did so much, Commander. You always believed and still reach out and touch. That meant a lot for you calling me on my cell phone. So I just want you to know that, Commander Muffley. You know, um, it, it just goes on and on, man. I'm um, Chris. You know what I'm saying? Come on, who else, man? It's just so many people. It's, of course, my wife. She right there through cancer and all, man, teaching class. She refused to lose. She just, she is an inspiration for me. And even my boys, man, if you're a parent like me, you're a teacher, yeah, you know, you're trying to make sure you, you know, you, you make this process easy and adjustable for your kids. You don't want them to feel the pressure and the sting of what's going on. So you might let them take a whole couple of days, you know, a couple of days, play video games, do whatever they want to do. You might even let them take a half a week off and do what they got to do. But then when you try to get them back on point, it's kind of hard because they're used to what you did before. So you can't yell at them. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, come on, man. But it's great because the one different thing I, I know when I say this in closing, I refuse to leave any relationship with negativity. Even in communicating with my kids and we and I got to remind them of certain things, I want to be able to remind them and correct them, but I want to tell them why. Even with my oldest son, Marco, I used to always say I used to beat him. I mean, I didn't did things where I, did, I, I didn't want my kids to follow my path so so much. I, I didn't did moments where I put I brought a pair of handcuffs and I handcuffed them. You know, there's something. You know, and he still tell you to that day, but I will cry. 
and I would cry because I just wanted him not to keep doing what he was doing so he could end up like me. It hurt me more. And I understand my parents when they used to say, man, this hurt me more than it hurts you. And even to me, it ain't even about the physical because I don't beat my kids. We just had these direct emotional things and these communications, but it hurt me when I have to correct them. They say I'm soft because I just want to find a way to keep peace, harmony, and happiness, especially doing right now, man. So let's all make it, man. Even though we say everybody's not going to make it to the next level, we can make a commitment right now to make it to the next level. That next level is not anything outside of you. That next level is everything inside of you. All the things that we know we might not do, that we haven't been doing or we've been slacking on, it's okay to slack. But once you recognize you you, you slacking, get up, you know, step your game up, get back on point, and then guess what? You're going to slack up again. Don't beat yourself up. As long as you keep on trying, that's all that matters. And that's all I'm saying, man. Let's grit it, man. Let's let's get it. Let's, let's make this the greatest experience that we can have as, as humanity by working together, getting along, finding creative ways to evolve, save our kids so they can be tomorrow's next leaders, make the environment a better place, make the world a better place, and, and recognize that for whatever reason this is happening, that we are using it to say, God, we are grateful and we are thankful for just being put on this earth. You understand what I'm saying? That's just from that's just for me. You know, so I got a lot of books. I could have went through a lot of things. I just wanna just, you know, let's just be authentic, man. Brand ain't no fake. Brand just who you are. We put a name on it. Just be you. Most importantly, find you. And that's what we're gonna do for the rest of our life. Find us. Remember, martial arts is it you can't buy martial arts. What you pay for don't give you what martial arts really is. What you pay for gives you an infrastructure to be able to practice martial arts and, 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 and being able to help your teacher and the people that are providing that service for you be able to make a living so they can be committed to doing what you have to do. But what really makes you a real black belt, an authentic black belt, and an authentic martial artist is what goes on inside of you. And when you understand that all the truth and all the things you need, God has given it to you, and your rest of your journey on this, on this planet Earth is to understand self, beat down self, overcome setbacks and all those things, then guess what happens? You will never, ever be lost because martial arts, that's the beautiful, unique thing about being a real martial artist. It got all the, oh man, it's just a fantastic discovery. I told the students yesterday, I, and me and my wife said, I said, look, I want to be perfect. I'm telling you, I want to be perfect. I cannot lose. It hate. That's why I stopped competing. I couldn't. I couldn't be married and be in a family if I was com still competing. I'm just like they're not the right person when I lose. I'm just. That's just. Oh man, I'm a competitive. I'm competitive. It's like it's hard, man. But I understand. For me, setting the goal to want to be perfect, I will never be perfect, but I will make progress every step of the way. But if I don't set my goals high, then what am I going to do? I'm gonna perform below my standards. So set your goals high. And then guess what? You will fall amongst the stars. And when you're amongst the stars, isn't that a great success? That's what it's all about, man. I don't want to be nowhere else but amongst the stars. Ain't no number one star. Everyone goes up and down. Don't think it's a permanent placement because it all moves around. I just want to be amongst greatness, man. We are amongst greatness right now. Let's make this the greatest moment in human history. Get it in. Create a masterpiece. Create a technical perfection. Do something. My whole curriculum, everything I represent, was created in jail. And when I came home, I just worked the plan. Did I plan? As Mr. Nick Kokina said, plan your work, work your plan. Preparation meets opportunity and success. What are you preparing for? What you going to live to, live up to? What you going to do right now? So that's for everybody. Let's get it, man. Let's be motivated. Let's be motivated. Let's push when everybody else sleeping. Let's let, let's do your homework when everybody else taking a break. Because when you come back and everybody else come back or whatever, you want to be ahead of the game, man. You ain't trying to be normal. We ain't trying to be ordinary. We want to be extraordinary because God don't create ordinary. God only create extraordinary greatness. We just got to tap into it. You feel me? So, man, that's my Friday. Wife got chemo today. Love her, man. Put some prayers out, you know. Um, let's just wish her, wish her the best, you know, going to chemo, not like any, I just, I just know how hard it is on her when she coming back and she got to, you know, function takes it like three days to, you know, to overcome it. But she's so strong, man. So strong. We do this together. We end this together. This, when we say family affair, this is a family affair for all of us, man. You know what I'm saying? If you don't, if you want to read a great book that talk about the legacy that we are all on to try to embark on right now. Get this book. This book is powerful because the legacy ain't even about the money. 
the legacy is about these things that we plant for our kids, we plant for our wives, we plant for our husbands, we plant for our community, we plant for our business, we plant for everybody. We get a chance to rebuild humanity. We get a chance to, to show more love, more appreciation than what we have ever shown in history. Things that we forgot about. Let's love one another so much, man. As Brandon Policio say, love hard, train hard, give hard, serve hard. And I forgot. If you watch um, Disrupt is the Day, um, I'm scheduled to do a talk on Point MMA, the kids Point MMA home training kit. Because guess what? While everybody might not be fighting, Point MMA can still be working. You can shadow box. You can do whatever you're supposed to do. That's what the kids Point MMA kit is all about. And guys, go check out the BAMS Martial Arts um, website. Because we now are giving that kit, the kids Point MMA away for free on there. So it's like... Everything, the, the, the fitness challenge, the techniques of point MMA, all that stuff, man. Because, you know, simulating training is one of the most powerful things that everybody do. You do it as an Air Force, you, uh, uh, a flight pilot. You do it even in basketball and baseball. Now, they got certain levels of simulated training. Even in MMA, you know, you got things because you cannot get your body beat up so much. So it's a perfect time for a new evolution, a new ev uh, elevation of success. Point MMA still here to train. The educational component for kids, Point MMA, is alive and well. At home, simple, making you great. So guess what? When you see a, a, a remember, and I'm going to say this last thing. Remember, a, a simple jumper, yeah, but then somebody come through, and they got a jumper that's far beyond anything that you didn't see. Steph Curry is like, oh, my God, I never seen a jumper like that. Because the game and the technique is so simple. That's what kids point of MMA is. It was designed to be so simple. So your level of perfection for you to become a star, outstanding person in any endeavor of it that you want to do as just a regular everyday person, as a world champion, as a movie star, whatever, you get a chance to stand out and exhibit your level of total perfection. So let's have a perfect, awesome, incredible day, people. If nobody haven't told you they love you, I probably was long, but that's it because I love you, man. Let's be blessed. Let's get it. Peace and blessings.